we almost think of it like air, where when we breathe, you know, we expect oxygen to come in. That's how we think about our power. Bill, turn it on, always have power. You're listening to the Art Cityscape. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Art Cityscape podcast. On today's episode, Mayor Matt Packard is joined by Springville City Power Director Sean Black. The two will discuss what it takes to power up Springville City. They also share important information about customer-owned generation, such as solar panels. Springville Power is one of the most reliable utilities in the nation. Our team does great work and this should be a good and informative episode. Here in October, we plan on having at least two episodes of the Art Cityscape podcast, so be watching your feed for more content coming your way. There are a couple of items of note in the community. The first is that the 36th Annual Spiritual and Religious Art of Utah Exhibition opens up this week. There's an opening reception on Wednesday from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Springville Museum of Art. That show will be open until January 11th, 2023. The Chamber of Commerce is putting on its Safe Halloween event on October 31st from 3 to 5 p.m. Come with your kids here to the Civic Center in costume and line up near the fire station. It's important we encourage you to follow the flow that we have planned for this event as things can get pretty chaotic, um, but it should be a very enjoyable event. Without further ado, let's get into the conversation with Mayor Packard and Sean. Okay, we'd like to welcome you as uh, citizens to our uh, latest podcast. We appreciate Sean Black being here, who's the director of the uh, Springville City Power. We're going to talk a little bit about power. We're going to talk about solar. So we appreciate him taking time here. But first of all, I'd like to let him introduce himself. Uh, Some of you may know him, some, some of you may not. So we'll give him a chance to introduce himself and maybe just quickly about his background and where he comes from. So, Sean, if you just take just a minute. So. Okay. Um, I've worked here since 1995 for Springville City. Uh, the population was a lot less then. And uh, I started in the power plant uh, working as an operator and then uh, worked my way up to where I was doing the power scheduling and um, a lot of maintenance uh, in different areas and uh Ended up getting a bachelor's degree in the early 2000s from uh, UVU, and then later on went and got a master's degree at BYU. Um, and and now I'm the director here. But um, love Springville. It's a beautiful town, and it, and owning your own power company is a huge asset to the citizens. Uh, it's it, you get to share in the profits and the benefits of owning this system where. Um, in, in a private type company, the shareholders would get that. So you're the shareholders of this company. Yeah. And I think that's important for the citizens mm-hmm. to know that this is our power company. And we uh, hire people like you to be able to manage the risk of that because there's lots of risks in this this uh, this industry. But it's also important to know that, like you mentioned, that they get the benefit of it. So maybe talk talk to the citizens a little bit about how the power comes from. What's behind when they flip the switch on, all of a sudden it comes on, and uh, where does it come from? People will say, well, don't we have generators? Don't we generate our own power? Uh, yes, no, or how does that all work? So, the power, The power system, the grid, is an amazing thing because you have all sorts of power plants all over that are adding into that, and Springville owns a bunch of different assets that are outside of Springville City that send power to the citizens here. And then the demand is created when we flip the switches or we turn on things. And and it's crazy. We we almost think of it like air, where when we breathe, you know, we expect oxygen to come in. That's how we think about our power. Bill, turn it on, always have power. And um, what's interesting about that is there's someone on the other side that is ramping up and down different generating resources to match that power. And so that's what we try to do and follow the demand, the load curves of the city and try and make it uh, best, um, the the lowest cost and most reliable possible is what we're trying to do. So it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz where you have the guy behind the screen working all the levers to, to make it all possible. So when they yeah. flip the switch, 
it actually comes on. Yeah, there's thousands of people that make it happen. And it's just amazing to me, uh, all the different big plants and little plants and, and renewable resources, all those adding into the pile to make it where we have power. And this grid you're talking about is kind of all the power goes into this grid and then cities take that power out based on contracts that they mm -hmm. have and they're able to draw that power. Now, we have assets, as you mentioned. Uh, maybe you could mention just the type of asset that they are. Are they hydro? Are they solar? Are they what are what kind of assets? We have a little Springville has a little of everything. So Springville was early in the Colorado River storage project. So they get hydro from that. We also have hydros up the canyon that we get power from. Um, also from the Olmstead project, which is at the mouth of Provo Canyon. We have two uh, solar uh, fields we're part uh, taking contracts from for the next 25 years. One's in northern Utah by Plymouth and one's uh, on the Navajo Reservation. We also have a big uh, ownership in a gas plant at the uh, in Payson at the Nebo, Nebo Power Station. Um, we also have two windmill farms that were uh, one of them's a contract and then one's ownership. So one's up by Idaho Falls and one is in Evanston, Wyoming. Um, and then we also have the Whitehead gas plant, which is used mostly for peaking in the summer, where we're using all the others all the time. So we use the, the Whitehead plant generally from uh, June through September. Great. So talk about when you first started with the city, um, <clears throat> what the kind of the how much electricity was being used and where we are today and kind of where we're going to be taking it in the future or how we cover our usage from the new houses and new businesses that come in. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, and that's probably the hardest thing right now. So when I started here, uh, Springville had a lot less people. I, I think it was around 15,000. Uh, all the fields out by the power plant and that didn't have homes. Um, our loads have gone from about 30 megawatts up to 70 megawatts on peak. And and we have some industrial customers that have always been there. So they didn't really change. It's mostly residential and, and small commercial or businesses in town. Um, as far as the future, I am very concerned because of the bringing in EVs. Not not only the household growth, Those but are, uh, uh, electric vehicles. vehicles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I could see us actually growing a hundred to one hundred and fifty percent really easy if EV saturation or electric vehicle saturation happens really fast. And it and it seems like that's what um, the car makers are going for, and that's kind of what the policy makers are going for. And so we're going to have to prepare for that, and that's got me very concerned how to do that. And, and so like we, to give you an example, we generally plan for about 5 kW on a house uh, with transformers, but we're thinking of going to 10 kW per house and maybe even um, some places are starting to go 15 kW. So it's almost three times the normal size of transformers, therefore wire services, everything to make all this happen. So, so as our society kind of shifts toward this electrical vehicle, everybody thinks that they're saving energy or maybe they're saving on the gas side or the oil side or petroleum side, someone has to provide that electricity. And that's kind of where you yeah. come in, and that's kind of what you're talking a little bit about. Is that right? Yeah, and and so one thing is electricity is super cheap right now. Um, there's been little bumps lately where it's gone up a lot out in the market, uh, but I'm I do worry that it will put a way higher demand on electrical production and – drive the electricity prices up as electric vehicles become more popular. Okay. Sounds good. So how are your rates set? How, how do you end up charging the consumer what they get charged? Where does that kind of the process that goes that through? That process. So what happens is we, we create a budget and it's based upon uh, the, the people there, the equipment we need to buy, the things we need to do for maintenance, and then any capital projects we need to do. And then there's, um, and then we also have to try to budget for all our power resources that we're going to supply with the city. Um, and that's a little more unpredictable, but we've been able to do it really well for quite a few years. Um, so after that's done, there's uh, 
benefits that are given to the city as well that come through the power budget, which would be uh, street lights, power for them, power for the city buildings, things of that nature, and and paying for um, some of the nice things that the city has. Um, and then we take all that and a rate is made and our rates are still low. Um, we're, we're one of the lowest in Utah County, as well as, uh, like, you know, if you compare us with the private entity here, Rocky Mountain Power, we're lower than them for residential rates. So we actually have lower prices and there's a lot of side benefits that are given to the citizens by owning their own power company. I, I think there's also a, a benefit if it's managed well to possibly blunt inflation and be able to not grow as much as maybe others will as costs come through because we can really control and we try and be really tight and thinking about the citizens all the time. So the rates themselves come from you Mm -hmm. and uh, it sounds like the things that keep you in check as far as being charging too much is the market itself. Is it uh, we compare ourselves continually between other municipalities, whether it's they get their electricity from the private side or they generate their own with their own power company. And everybody kind of manages within the block of where the market is. Does that sound mm-hmm. a, yep. a true reflection? Yeah. So you, you actually, yeah, you have two constraints. You actually have your city government. Um, we have a utility board that, that watches what we do. We try to report to them monthly. Um, we give them lots of reports about all our costs and our resources and what's going on with the power company. And then we also report to the mayor and the council. Um, so we have that check as well as a market check. So we can't get out of hand. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. So, Sean, let's kind of shift gears if we can just a little bit in relationship to power generation. You see lots of people now uh, in our city as well as other cities putting these solar panels on their on their houses. And uh, talk a little bit about the uh, solar. That's been a lot of question. Are you opposed to solar because you own your own company? How does that work in relationship to a private homeowner? Well, we're not opposed to solar at all. Uh, We actually are really, um, we really want it. We've entered into two long-term contracts for 25 years uh, with big farms. Uh, One's three three megawatts and the other one's two megawatts. Um, so we're bringing in five megawatts from the outside into Springville. Um, we also have some large commercial uh, providers here in town as well as the citizens. Um, the, the reason that we changed to the customer-owned generation uh, program was because net metering wasn't really thought out when it was created. And, and it wasn't really a problem for any utility Um because there were so few people on solar. But what ended up happening is uh, some companies were pretty smart about marketing and they were able to um, sort of like hijack the conversation by uh, really selling them hard and and going off the net metering uh, schedules with different utilities. And so what it made is, is like if you created a kilowatt hour, you got paid re- or you got reimbursed retail. And so you could actually minus out your bill, which sounds really great, but it doesn't show all the true costs of what's going on for the utility. And so where Springville citizens are the actual owners of this company, we had to look out for everyone in Springville and create a policy where we protected all citizens, those who wanted to have solar panels and those who didn't want to have solar panels. Uh, and so what ended up happening is we, we, give credits at four cents kilowatt hour to anything that's give, given to the city from your home, but anything that goes in is charged retail. And then there's some actual net metering that happens behind the meter that we don't see where you're producing and using at the exact same time. The reason we chose four cents is these big projects we're talking about, most of the contracts we can get are 3.5 cents. So we gave 3.5 cents plus half a cent for transmission savings and and tried to make it up uh, that way. Um, one thing that you should probably also know is not all kilowatts are priced the same. We can't store it. Um, and so every hour is priced differently on the market. And when solar is generated, it's generally not as expensive power as the uh, hours that are outside of when solar is generated. Yeah, not to get into the details, and we'll talk about how they can talk with you directly if they have some additional questions, but solar is basically a daytime producer, 
And the usage during the daytime is the lowest because people aren't home. And the highest use is when they get up in the morning and when they come home at night. And Mm -hmm. sometimes that's just on the shoulders of of really when solar is is doing it. Does that sound Mm -hmm. right? Yep, it is. Well, uh, lots of people have questions about solar. We we certainly support solar. And and, um, how can someone get in touch with you if they have additional questions about solar and their particular personal situation in their home? I would love to talk to anyone that wants to talk about this issue. Uh, you can call down to the um, our dispatch, which is 801-489-2750, and they can uh, hook you up with me, or uh, you can email me at slblack at springville.org and ask me questions if you want to do it that way. But either either way will work great. I love to talk with people about this whole subject, and especially before you buy panels, um, because for some people it's good financially, and for some people it's not, if it's only financial. If it's for other reasons, uh, environmental, then you may want to do it anyway. We just want to make sure you're educated in, in that process. Um, and there's lots of ways to save energy. Talk, we can talk about different energy saving devices or things you can do with your home that make it so you use like less electricity. Okay. Again, 801 489 2710. 50. 2750. Yep. 2750. Yep. And then it's uh, S Black. SL Black. SL Black yep. at Springville.org. Yep. Okay. That's great. Those are great contacts. So anything else that you'd like to share with the citizens in relationship to the um, power area of the city? One thing that I've always admired over the last couple of years is that when I grew up, about every bird that landed on the wire shut the electrical system down. We'd always have outages constantly. And uh, the reliability has just been really quite incredible um, thanks to all the workers. And I know Leon Fredrickson has been a big part of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk a little bit about that or at least make sure uh, we we've had a lot of good guys work uh, for Springville City Power uh, through the years. And I, I'd like to mention uh, Matt Hancock, Tony Fieldstead. They they were a huge driver of this. Uh, Cal Baxter before them, um, as well as uh, Leon. All, everyone has been trying to make things more reliable. We have some really good substation techs that work there right now and good linemen and uh, just really good people that are always trying to improve reliability. And so one of the, the heart of that, a lot of it is substation, substation controls and the good tree trimming and, and just getting bad spots out. We, uh, we have a called the hot shock truck goes around and, and looks for thermal problems, mm-hmm. uh, infrared, and they are able to see issues. And so we drive that truck around once a year around our transmission system, around our substations. And when we find problems now and then, and we're able to fix them before they create outages or, or at least have a planned outage. So that's, it's just, I'm standing on the shoulders of a lot of good people that, that have been here. Mm-hmm. So. That's great. Well, we appreciate you coming in. It's been awful nice to have you come in. We hope to invite you back and uh, maybe update the citizens on how the system itself is working. So thanks again, Sean. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay. As always, thanks for listening to today's podcast. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, we'll have at least one more episode this month, so watch out for that. A big thanks to Mayor Matt Packard and Sean Black for taking the time to share this information with us. We will see you next time. Have an excellent day.